Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, very warm welcome to Tech Black uh, 2022 Graphene Conference. Uh, I'm Alia Hassan, I'm a technology blogger at Tech Black, and I will be moderating uh, this session today. Um, without further ado, let's start our session with welcoming Dr. Demetri, uh, the CEO of Dixmat um, and the expert uh, in graphene and carbon nanotube uh, and uh, fluid processing uh, solutions, uh, as well as he will present to us today um, about uh, Dixmat uh, technology, about high performance uh, carbon nanotube uh, for. Um, wearables and uh, medical devices. So Dr. Demetri, the stage is yours. Hi, everybody. I'm going to be telling you about some of the materials we've been developing over at Dexmat. And it's uh, conductive fibers and films and threads that uh, we are using for a number of wearables and smart textile applications. As everyone in this conference probably is well aware, carbon nanotubes have been touted as this ultra material that on the individual molecule level has extremely high properties. So order of magnitude higher tensile strength than steel and carbon fiber, electrical conductivity that's almost double that of copper and silver on a single molecule level, uh, as well as very high thermal conductivity. And all this is coupled with very low density. So uh, this material is very lightweight. At Dexmat, we've developed a material that we call Galvorn, which is many millions and billions of carbon nanotubes assembled together into fibers and films. Uh, we can then also twist them or braid them into yarns. And you can see a spool of 1500 meters of yarn on the left here, uh, assemble them into um, highly aligned film structures. And then we can also take these fibers and yarns and weave or uh, knit or combine them together to make fabrics. And what we're able to make here is a lightweight alternative to metal-based conductors, but this lightweight Galvorn alternative has superior durability, flexibility, corrosion resistance, and biocompatibility. At the same time, it's 90% lighter than a material like metal copper wire uh, because of its low density. And in, furthermore, because of its flexibility, it's processable with standard textile equipment. So a perfect material for all types of smart textile applications. Galvorn is also produced by a scalable fluid phase process, and we can actually get raw CNT materials that can be produced via a greenhouse gas neutral process. Uh, and this process also can generate hydrogen at the same time. So we're not gonna go into all the specifics of that. I'm gonna uh, give you a little bit more info about uh, some of the properties of Galvorn and then talk about some of these uh, wearable e-textile type applications. So the Dexmat team uh, consists of, uh, of four full-time employees and uh, a couple of part-time employees. We have a lot of experience in carbon nanomaterials development, uh, and we have a very strong group of engineers that will be featured in some of the videos that I'm gonna be going through uh, over the next uh, 20 minutes. So the technology behind taking carbon nanotubes and transforming them into high performance fibers and films is based on taking disordered carbon nanotube powder, as you see uh, on the top left, dissolving this uh, carbon nanotube materials in acids, uh, which form a liquid crystal in phase that can then be processed with traditional polymer processing methods like fiber spinning and film casting. And this was what gives the Galvorn fibers and films the high properties is the fact that we get all these carbon nanotubes aligned and oriented so that they're tightly packed and all facing one direction. And that's critical for getting highest performance out of uh, Galvorn materials. A important thing that we found is that the type of nanotubes that are used for making fibers and films is very important to getting better properties. And this is very similar to uh, working with polymeric materials to make polymeric fibers. Um, so what we've figured out is one of the key things that's necessary is to have a very high aspect ratio, which is the length divided by the diameter of the individual nanotubes. And uh, back when I was doing my PhD over at Rice University,